What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant, you're watching Sub Urban Nerd, this channel where I get my reviews on today's nerd news. Well, I'm giving my reviews on Supergirl Season 3, and this is uh, the, the, the first episode back from the, I guess, mid-season finale. Um, it was a good episode, uh, there was definitely some things that I was like, what the, and then there was some moments where I was like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, starting off, basically, Kara got her ass kicked in the uh, mid-season finale. Um, she wakes up, and right off the bat, I'm like, everything's a little too bright. She's in, she's, this is a dream. She's in a dream. And yes, I was right. She was in a dream, and all of a sudden, you see, uh, someone knock on her door, she opens it up, and guess who it is? It is Brainiac 5. Yeah, um, because what I heard is, like, definitely, they're bringing a Legion into Supergirl, which is kind of cool, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's not the Legion we all know of, but it's just, it's still Legion. And, uh, yeah. He comes in and basically tells her, yeah, you're in a coma, um, you got your ass whooped, you're in some liquid, you're healing, calm down. And she's like, mm, what, huh, nah, I need to get out of here. And he was like, no, nah, you gotta calm down. She's like, no, nah, I gotta get out of here. But you know, Kara, she doesn't like to, you know, be told what to do. So then meanwhile, you've got the whole, like, love thing going on with Jimmy Olsen and, and um, I think what's her name, um, Alex... Oh, Lena, uh, Kat, uh, Kat McGrath, who is, uh, playing Lena Luther, and yeah, um, you're a little awkward about that, but then, then she's asking, like, where's Kara, and he's like, oh, um, she's, uh, to kind of divert from the fact that he's acting weird around her, she's like, oh, she's got the flu, and that opens up, she's like, oh, she didn't tell me, I'm her best friend, let me go get her some chicken soup, and then that's when this whole other thing where you gotta get Martian Manhunter to go pretend to be Kara, and be all awkward or whatever, whatnot, but the main story is going on with Rain, it's coming down, she's basically trying to cleanse the the city of all the bad doing, all the, all the bad people, and anybody that even harbors them, she thinks even the police harboring them is, like, locking them up is harboring them, when she, she thinks it should be smited, everyone should just be dead, who doesn't follow rules? Um, she's very like, I guess, uh, one side as far as there is no gray. You're good, bad. If you're bad, you're dead. And I was, I mean, she was a little bit crazy, but she's still a good one that's playing her. Uh, yeah, you see that she still has like a split personality. So she, I don't know if she remembers everything because she be playing with her daughter like no, not no cares in the world. So I'm like wondering if uh, if if it's like a separate brain, like she doesn't remember everything that she's doing, because I could have sworn she sort of does remember. Because when she was uh, talking about like uh, about Supergirl, she she sort of says some things. So I think she sort of remembers, but I think she just goes and acts normal for the daughter. So you know, as far as like split personality, I don't I don't believe that's what it is, but I could be wrong. But um, yeah, then you've got Mon L and uh, uh, Maggie Sawyer or whatever. Basically saying that they can't interfere, they can't fight Rain because they've got some stuff in their genetics that's going to save the future once they get back to it. So if they die now, then the future's doomed. And um, that's why, you know, the, the sister, Alex Danvers, like, she's like, okay, I understand. But me, in the meanwhile, like, yo, Alex Danvers and, and um, Martian Manhunter, yo... They come up with this plan, and the thing is, like, they, they were saying they're going to get the weapons, they're going to get kryptonite, and I'm like, alright, I'm down for it. And then all of a sudden they have this scene where these people run into the bank with guns, robbing them, and the first thing I'm like, oh, what's wrong with these crooks or bad guys in this town? It's like, it's like, like the, like the people that do bad stuff in Gotham with Batman, knowing damn well Batman's going to come up. Why would you even bother? Like, see, Metropolis. If you know there's a superhero, not even, it's even worse if, with, without Supergirl. You know there's a bad guy straight up killing bad guys, not locking him up, just murdering them in front of everybody. Why would you? So then when they roll up with these guns, shooting up the place, I'm like, yo, what, what's wrong with these people? But then you come to find out, oh, it's a trap. Or, or like, you know, Star Wars, it's a trap! Like, so, like in Star Wars, but, um, uh, what, so, so then, that's when they sprung out, you know, they, they, they have all these weapons, they have these sound things, they have like a red kryptonite grenade, weakens, uh, rain, then they start shooting her with these sound waves, then they put this kryptonite kind of chain on her, and then they think they got her, and this chick is like, oh, hell nah, 
backhands these motherfuckers. And then, like, straight, just like, just takes a rope or the whip or whatever, wraps around um, Alex, whips her legs, he goes down, which I guess breaks her ankle or whatever. Then you got, um, like, she, she, she backhands, she takes off the chain, just ch chucks it, and then she, she's about to go hit uh, Carol, and then that's when um, uh, John comes in. And then like, bam, like, yo, don't touch her. And uh, she she was like, all right, and then dipped off. And then that's when they realized, yo, there was like, this took down Kara. Why didn't it take down her? And they were like, maybe immunity. So they come up with the idea, you know, maybe we should uh, inject her with this uh, kryptonite. Maybe that's the best way. So then the whole thing, you still got Kara locked in her brain, talking to Brainiac 5, trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm like, all right. This usually it's it's usually this thing that like you're stuck in your brain. Always these, these shows always do the same kind of trope, which I still enjoyed the show. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Supergirl is very, is even though it's dark, there's more lightheartedness. There's more hope in it as far as is when you're watching like Go um, Gotham or if you're watching like Arrow, it's very gloom and doom. Even even Flash was gloom and doom last season. This season is a little bit more lighthearted. Still still some gloom and doom up in there. But Supergirl. Even when it's bad, it's still good. So that's one thing I like about Supergirl. It's very lighthearted. I like that. Positivity, y'all. Positivity. Especially on Black uh, Martin Luther King Day. All positivity. She had a dream. And it was to smite rain. And to get out of her room. Because that's where she was trapped, actually. She was locked in a room. And she realized, like, yo, maybe there's something in this room. Because she, she, they were, um, Brainiac was like, you should be able to leave. But the door won't open. Could it be self-preservation? She was like, I'm not afraid. And then she did a whole eye beam scream thing to, like, do. But it's still stuck. So she realized maybe there's something she has to learn. Maybe there's something she has to realize about herself. And, um, meanwhile, that's happened. You got Mon L. And then the girl decides, you know what? You're going to put up a fight. Because she goes to a prison and is murking everyone. It's not just prisoners, but everyone. Even, like, the, uh, the, 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 the guards or whatever. And then that one guy that was in one of the... Uh, I forget uh, the beginning of the episode uh, season where he's, like... He knows about all about Kara and her, her, her life or whatever. And he says, yo, let me, let me be part of you. You don't have to smite me now. Let me follow you, whatever. And then that's when, you know, Manel rolls up with his leather jacket. Like, the whole... Uh, CW, every suit is like a leather suit, but they, it looks good. Like I kind of want that jacket on some real shit. Like I like the the jacket look hot. I want it. Um, so then they go fight. The um the girl you find out she has telekinetic or whatever power, so she can move the objects, make force fields, sort of like uh, Sue Storm. Uh, but they ain't doing nothing. Then Kara wakes up, puts on a hurt in one hit, but then she was she gets knocked back, but she played it off. So she could get near the kryptonite, and she hold on to her, and then when a the girl goes to hit her, stabs that chick in the neck with the kryptonite, and injects it into her, and then still the girl has enough power to fly off and go over to the desert where the whole, uh, her whole fortress of solitude is, and, um, that's pretty much how it ends. Uh, she realized the guy, the, the preacher or whatever, shows up inside that fortress or whatever, they tell her she has friends. You see, they tell her that she has to go find more like her, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, these Kryptonians, like, they're, they're everywhere. Like, there's an army of them all in this world. It's crazy because there was an invasion before. And then and then you got mon with his people that invaded last season. And then now you got more Kryptonians that are bad guys. Like, I, yo, like, j I could have sworn that the whole thing was Superman was a sole survivor. It seems like everybody survived this shit other than his parents and Kara's parents at this point. It's like, they was like, everybody else was left and they were like, yo, wait a second. Everybody else knew too? And we just sent our kids off? Uh, that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why there's so many, but regardless of the fact, it's still an entertaining show. Um, uh, you come and see that definitely is going to be crazy from now on. Uh, Kara is definitely going to still try and put up a fight and be stronger. You know she's going to win eventually, but uh, I don't know where the storyline is going to go with Rain because Rain's something new. I've never known about Rain, but we'll see how it goes. So that's pretty much my review. If I was to give it a grade, I'd give it a nice little B plus because it definitely was entertaining. Had some good action fight, and then definitely surprised the fact that Kryptonite doesn't hurt her. And then the whole, you know, Jimmy Olsen and stuff, love triangle, but in the end, Kara... You know, Amon El says that he does care about her still. He was worried. And that he liked fighting with her. Maybe he'll do it again. So, that's pretty much my review for... I forget what this episode is, but I'll definitely put it in, in a thumbnail. Uh, but it's a season... Uh, the the mid-season uh, premiere 
for 2018 and I liked it. Remember to subscribe, comment down below, tell your friends, uh, check out the, uh, my last uh, video that I did a review on, check out my playlist of the videos that I do on TV. And remember, I'm Wes Grant, you've been watching Sub Urban Nerd, you've just been nerdified. Catch you guys on the next video.